Welcome to Smart Notebook Math Tools. In this session, we will be looking at how to customize our graphs and how to use the graph wizard. First, to customize our graphs. In the bottom right of your graphs, you will see two arrows that allow you to reveal a hidden menu. On the menu, you will see icons that allow you to zoom in, zoom out, and to pan. Here's an example. A scatter plot was created using the table of values below. Why can't we see anything? Looking at the ordered pairs, we realize that our points are not on the grid. And therefore, using the two arrows on the bottom right to reveal my hidden menu, I can see the three icons for panning, zooming out, and zooming in. Using the hand, I pan down until I reveal my first point. And then I could use my magnifying glass with the negative sign to zoom out until all four points appear on the grid. Other features on the hidden menu allow me to put in grid lines, label our points, draw a line of best fit, put in numbers on the axes, or label the axes, and create titles for my graphs. So going back to my previous graph, I can now see the five other icons on the hidden menu. The one on the left allows me to remove my grid lines or put them in. The second icon from the left allows me to label my points. The third icon on my left allows me to draw a line of best fit. The fourth icon on the left allows me to either remove the numbers from my axes or put them in. And the last icon from the left allows me to create space around my grid so that I could write labels for my axes or a title for my graph. So double clicking on that space for a title, I can now open up my keyboard and type in a title for the graph. And once I click off, I have that title. Here's another example. Investigate the properties of a line of best fit. So using my graph icon on the secondary toolbar or my math toolbar, I select a quadrant graph. Holding the space, the white space on the outside around the grid, I can move it into my working space. And then I can put in a scattering of points by double clicking. And then I can draw a line of best fit. Using my measurement tool, I can select the ruler, drag it onto my workspace, rotate my ruler until I think it's in position for to draw my line of best fit. And then using a pen, I can now draw my line of best fit along that straight edge, delete my ruler, and then check my accuracy using the line of best fit icon. And so the students can use this to practice their accuracy in drawing a line of best fit. I can also use my properties tab to change some of the features of my graph manually. So going back to my previous graph, I'm going to erase, first of all, my line of best fit. Select my graph, select my properties tab, 
select graph settings and start to change some of the features. For example, for a scatter plot, I might not want to use my grid lines. I might want to label my points and maybe show only part of the graph. So might not have to end at 10. Could end at 7 instead. And maybe my vertical axis, I could step by 2 instead of 1. OK, so there you can see how we can change the features manually using the Properties tab. Next, we can see how to use the graph wizard. This helps you to build your Cartesian graphs, quadrant graphs, or number lines. It's as if the students were making decisions to graph by hand. So here, they can learn using the graph wizards how to create a scatter plot using the table of values. So first of all, selecting my graph icon on my secondary toolbar or my math toolbar and choosing this time the wizard. Before I do that, I'm going to cancel this and open up my keyboard so that I can input values into my graphing wizard. Now again, use the graph icon and choose the wizard icon. And now the decision making the students will go through as they look at the table of values, first of all, since it starts at zero, I may only need a quadrant graph rather than a Cartesian graph. Next, I will start to change some of the features of the X and Y axes. So I can start at zero for the time, but I may only go to 20 instead of 10. So changing the end value to 20 and also the step value I can up that with an arrows to 5. And you can see it changing on the right side as a preview. Next, for the Y coordinates, I will start at 250 rather than 0, end at 450, and step by 50. Again, it's previewed on the right, and when I'm satisfied, I select Finish, and then that grid appears where I can move it onto my workspace. Next, the students would plot the points. They can double-click to plot, plot the points, so clicking on the graph. First point at 0, 450. 5 and 450, 10 and 350, 15 and 300, and finally a point at 20 and 250. In the next session, we will start to look at dynamic linking and integration.